Welcome to an interview with DJ Nocturna. Today, I'm speaking with iconic photographer, American photographer, and neo-symbolist artist, John Santorineros. Welcome back, I should say, John. Yeah. Hi, Anne. How are you? <laughs> it's welcome back. You know, the, the, and I was just re-watching the interview I did with you last mm -hmm. year. I think it was around the same time. And I'm like, it brought me back all these like incredible things that you know, and I'm thinking, I'm rethinking them again. And I, I don't want to ask you the same thing I did because I want to, I'm going to send a link to that interview right. that we did. Yeah. But, um, you know, congratulations on your third book. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and honestly, I don't think it's going to be the last. <laughs> you, really you, are not, you are not the first person to, to try to uh, keep me going, making, making oh, photographs. Please, please, please do not stop, please. You know, I, and, you know, you got to do film next time. I, I have done um, some <laughs> short art films um, and I have written a couple of scripts. Unfortunately, um, when you're making a film, it's not a solo project. You need a crew, you need sound people, camera people. I know. Lots, yeah. of, lots of money. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but, I, I, but I have done a few small art films. Yeah. Well, you know, if you got talent, you got talent, no matter what. You, you can do oh. any kind of media because I know that you know, you are a master at many artistic disciplines. Okay, for one, your 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 first uh, uh, ceramic. Uh, so what do you, what is the word? Ceramic, ceramic. A ceramic. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then you were also a sculptor and a painter. Correct. Prior to being yeah. a photographer, which is amazing, and um, in fact, your works were in this all these galleries back in the day, right? I mean, you travel the you travel the U.S. and and. Um, Especially what I wanted, what I'm trying to lead to that to this part is how you started and how you began in photography. Because I know you you showed your work in the San Francisco Gallery. I think it's called the Elaine Potter Gallery. Correct. And I don't know if they're still there because a lot of galleries they shift and change. But there was an earthquake yeah. which destroyed yeah. a lot of your yeah. pottery at the time. It did. Yeah. It did. Uh, the the show at uh, Elaine Potter Gallery was my sort of my biggest show. It's yeah. for, for ceramists showing at that gallery at that time was basically showing at the Met or the Metropolitan Museum. It was the highlight of any ceramic person's career. And the weekend it was supposed to open, um, the earthquake happened. So the, well, the what gallery- year? Do you remember what year that was? I do not offhand. I, it was 80, I'm going to say 89, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, and it just flattened the gallery. So all my work was destroyed, never mm. got an opening. Uh, mm. You know, everything was in chaos at that time. Uh, mm. So that sort of persuaded me to perhaps think about changing mediums. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time I was going for my master's in photography. Um, also at that time, and I was thinking of changing anyway, uh, it, it I was sort of struggling with the issue of what to do about it. And it seemed that the universe wanted me to change things. So I think an earthquake is a pretty heavy symbol. So, <laughs> you know, that's like, you know, that's like the tower in the tarot deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a tower moment there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then uh, and unfortunately, uh, two weeks after that, my agent, uh, who represented me in New York City died of AIDS at the time, and it was like I think I think maybe it's time to to change what I do. So I, I started to just focus mainly on my uh, photography work because I was building up my master show anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just started to focus on that a little bit more, and then it just led me to what I what I do today. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of sad when something like that happens because that that work is like special. You I mean you put so much effort into the pottery, the, all those things that you've done. Yeah, and it's just like it's damage, you know. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it's a lot. I mean, I did it for eleven years, so it was a long yeah. it was a long time. And and that can can never be replaced. It's like a memory. It's like an it's like yeah. a moment. Yeah. So, but you know, it it it's it's actually a catalyst to brought you, brought you to where you are now. Yeah, that is, is ab um, absolutely correct. Yeah. Now, um, uh, Propi Photo, this is Germany's leading photography, called you the world's leading neo symbolist artist. They gave they coined you that name, right? Mm -hmm. And 
Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, for people that may want to, may not know exactly what that means? Because I know you, uh, yeah. Yeah. A symbol, the symbolist movement was an art movement that started at the mid 1800s. Mm -hmm. And it, it mostly focused ironically uh, on writing and poems, but there are also visual artists that believed in the symbolist movement. It, it lasted uh, not, that, not that long. Um, and, but there were artists like uh, Klimt and Radon and uh, yeah. Moreau who considered themselves uh, symbolists. And the, uh, I guess the shortest way to explain what symbolism is about is they believed that art should not only be, touch your, sub, your, your conscious mind. Um, so if you see something that makes you happy or sad, that's on a conscious sort of level but also to touch you deeper inside on a subconscious level. Uh, they believe that it should evoke things from your past, your, invoke your dreams, things having to do with that. Um, that was the basic tenet of the symbolist movement. And, and I know a lot of your work is inspired by your dreams. Correct, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's why uh, Profi Photo they, they're the ones that labeled me a symbol. They labeled me a neo symbolist. Um, I consider myself, I, I, I took that up and I consider myself a black symbolist because my work comes from my dreams and more and not happy dreams. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and that's the seed of where I get the inspiration to, to construct the sets and do the work that I do. When, when you get these dreams, do you, do you wake up and you get all scared or? I mean, what happened? No, I, 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 I have insomnia, so I don't sleep. Um, I don't dream. I don't remember my dreams. I don't sleep very well, and I don't remember my dreams. I have to take medication because of the insomnia, and I think that suppresses my memory of remembering the dreams in detail. So I'll wake up, and I know, obviously, that I've been dreaming, but I just have a sort of a taste, an idea, not, not something concrete, and that's the starting point of when I start to create. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, you know, what's really special about your work too, about your images is that um, you build these, you create your own um, from your vision, from your dreams, you create this from your imagination. You take, you take like, for example, you build your set, your setting with Correct. these gobos, which I, which I'm, I'm familiar with gobos too, because, um, you know, that's part of a theater thing, uh, you know, for- Right, for it is. You know the light, the lighting people, the lighting technician. They use gobos, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I know that because I had a, a pageant that I was doing here, Miss Vamp Hawaii, and uh, we used to, they used those gobos to build the stage, and it was amazing. And I can see that in your sets, and I always found that really fascinating because you build your own setting, and that's Correct. like, and you build your your set, your furniture, your little, um, you know, images you you put there. Right. Uh, yeah. Every everything in the photograph is placed in very specific locations. Everything in the photograph is there because I placed it there because I needed it to be there. Um, and the gobos is an interesting thing because you really don't, if you were to look at the photograph, you really don't notice it, but shadows play uh, yeah. a, an extremely important part in my photographs. So the gobos allow me to cast um, stars you know, shadows of stars or moons or planets or trees or whatever I want in specific areas and even on the model's uh, body. And you don't really notice it unless you really, really look. Yeah, and I that the gobos are really, the gobos really help in that respect. Yeah. Do you know when you first started shooting back, as a, you know, back in the day, I mean, you were shooting before the digital age, right? So it's a little yeah. different oh, now. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how do you find that? Um, I don't know if you do digital photography or you still stick with the original. Um, you probably do both now, right? Um, I, I haven't done film in a very long time. I, I started out obviously with a film camera. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the technology caught up to, uh, enough to a place where I thought to switch, I switched over. So everything in the new book um, Maybe not everything, I'm sorry, because there's some old images in there that I revisited, which is a whole another reason which we can talk about why I'm doing the book. But um, a lot of it is, is digital uh, Nikon cameras. I usually use Nikon equipment. Yeah. 
You know, I, I have to quote this as I read this somewhere, you know, Playboy quoted you in an interview. They did an interview with you a few years ago. They said mm -hmm. just about anyone with a digital camera can be a photographer. Not all erotic photographer can be an artist. And then they said that you are a true erotic artist. And that's yeah, true. that was that was a great that was. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. That was for Playboy TV. They actually did an episode on me. Yeah. Uh, and they came to my studio and hung out for a couple of days, um, shooting me, shooting the model, seeing my process, following me around. It was a unique experience to ha have people sort of around me all the time, following me with a camera. You know, uh, it was it was great, though. And I and I thought for Playboy TV that sometimes can be exploitive, uh -huh. um, that that they took a sort of a serious angle on it. Mm -hmm. which I was I was so happy with the producer about that. No, I liked it a lot. I saw the I saw it. It was a great. Yeah, I, I think they did a great I think they did a really quite excellent job. Most of the time on um, Playboy TV interviews is all about just seeing, you know, women or girls, you know, jumping around with boobs. And, and it, the story has almost nothing to do with anything. Oh, it has a lot of yeah. good material in there. But yeah. that interview itself, the producer really did an excellent job for me. And this was a, this was during the time when you were living in New York. I know you lived in New York City before you moved to Athens, Georgia, which you are now. Correct. Right. Yeah. And so that was a whole different thing. You were doing a lot of shows. It's a little different now, right? How do you like living in George, um, in Athens, your Georgia? Well, it's different. Uh, very different, especially lately. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it is. It is like moving to a different country. Yeah, that's the easiest way I can say is if you pick yourself up and move to Romania, um, you would, it, it's a lot of getting used to. Yeah. But, but I love it here. I love the weather, which was one of the things, one of the reasons I moved. And the other reason was I wanted to have, uh, be separated out of the city. I was tired of city. Yeah. And so true. I have like 10 acres of land, you know, it's, it's like my studio is bigger than my house. I had it built yeah. on, on a different part nice. of my property. Yeah, so, no, no complaints. I, I, I know yeah. you did the right choice. Yeah, because I can see that you have more time to yourself. You have more yeah. time to do your work. You can think better. Yeah. You know, you don't have, you're yeah. not with all, you know, it's just different. And you have a lot of uh, personal time, you know, with you and your and your wife and, and just everything, right. right? Yeah, exactly. Now, you know, your work is, um, you know, um, many people would probably say uh, is, is shocking intense, haunting, right? That's one of the sort of, sort of maybe some of the adjectives. And, right. you know, to me, your, your photography causes a catharsis to a lot of people when they see mm -hmm. it. It's almost like it gives you that feeling that takes you to, to a place where you don't want to be or a place that, you know, it could be any of that, right? Right. But, oh, yeah, but, absolutely. But it's, it's one of those things that you just can't stop looking at it anyway. Well, I... Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I'm hoping that it engages the viewer. You know, I, I, I'm hoping, especially in today, uh, today's society where, uh, you know, people, this is the way people look at artwork, you know, this, this is the, the yeah, yeah. You know, this, this is, this is, this is the way they look at artwork. Instead of going to a gallery and spending the time in the environment where I art's know. supposed to be, uh, you know, people swipe through really quickly. So in today's society, with this generation to be able to get them to stop for a second and look at the work is it's a it's a miracle first of all um but i'm, I'm happy that my work can do that well i i'm hoping that galleries again you know from all when the pandemic is over i hope that you know galleries will reopen again get people in there get real you know true to true work you know rather than just the yeah, spiking yeah. of the camera yeah. because i you know I, I i like that and i like <clears> books <throat> you know i like books the paper quality instead of like you know the ebooks they call it now which is right not, which is really not good for the eyes <laughs> right i mean i i uh, yeah i really hope that they would do that again just like you you so you have um you have two books that you already published uh that's been released and that's mm -hmm. uh, the fruit of the secret god which is a limited edition which i'm very happy to say i bought i have it because it's not available anymore <laughs> it is right. not available yeah. anymore that is correct and that was in back in 1999, and you know, and the, um, 
I remember, you know, one of the connections that we have is, uh, I, you know, I have to do a little shout out to her because she, she's, she passed away already. Her name is Karina, but uh, she did, she did talk very um, highly about you. Um, you know, this is artist. He's great. His name is John Santanero. So you should check out his book and all that. And I'm like, yeah, wow. So I looked it up and I, that's, that's when I actually got the book. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> and I'm so Small glad. Small world. I yeah, and I and I love the photos in it, and I was like, wow, this is a great artist. And then, of course, you know, um, our friend, you know, um, um, and and artist, singer, um, musician, Martin Bowles of Attrition. Yeah, of course, yeah. Martin. I've been friends for a <laughs> long time. I know he's probably going to be watching this, so I'll just do a big shout out to him. <laughs> he has an album coming out called The Black Mariah, which is I'm really looking forward to that album, which will be released, uh, I think, sometime in the end of the end of the year uh but right. he, he, your, you but your, your work is featured in his um albums the hand that feeds mm -hmm. uh, which is a great album and then keepsakes and reflections in the jeopardy maze dante's kitchen and sliding horse one in dissolution i believe yeah. yeah we we had a good relationship for for a long time um him and i and he actually came to visit me at, at when he was playing in new york city he actually came to the, to the studio and hung out him and his bandmates came and hung out so i was really happy to be able to like, like meet him and see him after working with him for so long mm -hmm. yeah he's, he's an amazing guy i just love he's Mark. a good guy he's a good guy <laughs> yeah and uh you know one of my and i know you're also influenced by this uh photographer his name is joe peter whitkin and i i truly love his work as well yeah joe, yeah i i met him um a couple of times um wow. he actually I have a, a funny story about that. When I first started photography, this is even before I decided to concentrate on photography. This is when I started like undergraduate photography. Um, a friend of mine graduated from the same school that he graduated from in New York, Cooper Union. And mm -hmm. they had a reunion and, and Joel went and they started talking and he actually got his home address. And so my friend tells me, well, you know, Joel said that if you want to send them some stuff, send them some stuff and he'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. So I sent him some work. He wrote me a letter back, said it was terrible, um, that he didn't find any kind of uh, meaning or form in it. And so I wrote him back and, you know, I wasn't devastated because I was so thrilled that he even took the time to write to me and to even look at my work. And uh, so I still have the letter. Uh, mm -hmm. I still have it in his book, which I have all his books. And I just thought it was amazing. I was, I guess, overtaken by the fact that this artist that I, I admired took the time to handwrite me a letter um, and sort of overlooked the fact that he told me I sucked, you know? So, um, why? Well, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that he, <laughs> I mean, I, I believe what you're telling me, but I, you know, what I'm saying is, uh, well, here's the second part <laughs> of the story. So after I wrote him, I wrote to him again and thanked him for taking the time to look at my work and respected his, you know, I would take his word to heart and listen mm -hmm. to what he had to say. Um, he wrote me back again. And then this time he says, well, maybe I was a little harsh with you. I know you're just developing. Uh, so it, it, so that was very nice. Uh, this is like way back in the day. So. You know, see, I, I knew there was another story to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know you were a founding member of this group called, there's an activist art group called Art Fux, F-U-X. Right. Yeah. F-U-X. Yeah, yeah and, and they're one of the pioneers of uh, what's, what's called cultural jamming. Correct. That's yeah. a, and that's a group that they do, they parody ads and they, you know, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. You know, they hijack billboards to change the message. Yeah, we, we had Art Fuck started um, in 1989, I'm thinking, 87, 80. Is it some, still around? Somewhere in, somewhere is, I'm sorry? Is it still around? Um, no, no. They, we yeah. disbanded a long time ago. Uh, but it started at a show at a university called Flagging Our Freedom. And each piece uh, in the show had to have something to do with the flag. Because at the time, there was a Supreme Court case going on about defacing the flag and whether you were allowed to do that as a form of expression. 
uh, as as your you know your uh, your constitutional right to express yourself. Could you use the flag to do that? And it, it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and so we were inspired by that uh, because we were big believers in freedom of speech and to be able to say what you want to say, how you want to say it, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, obviously. Uh, and so Artifacts began out of that and it just took off. It was just around, we hit it just at the right time. Um, mm -hmm. It was the, the war was going on and um, I think it was the Iraqi war. Uh, the first attempt at the World Trade Center had happened. Um, oh, wow. AIDS was just becoming in the forefront of the conscious mind of society. There was a lot of stuff going on. And we just hit it right at the right time. And so we changed billboards. We put up posters. We did street art. We did street performances. Um, and yeah. we were together uh, about three years. And that was in, uh, in, New, in New York? New York, yeah, primarily yeah, in, the, in the metro area of New York, yeah, and, and in New York City. Yeah, I love the motto, art pushes, art provokes, art fucks. <laughs> yeah. Love that one. That was, that was our motto. Yeah, that was. A, I, I wish it was still around because, uh, I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, so somebody to support art like that is really important right now, especially. Yeah, we um, we we sort of lived in our studio literally. We were there, twenty four seven, just doing artwork, performance pieces. A lot of things I wish I had were the performance pieces because some of them were just brilliant, and yeah. we don't have any video records of them or anything. Uh, I, I guess it was a long time ago when you're young, you just kind of want to do your thing. You just want to get out there and do it. You don't think about archiving what you've done. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I sort of wish we had that, but we, I know. unfortunately I mean, we don't. It's such an interesting, <clears throat> such an interesting group, you know, especially now. I mean, we, when, I mean, it's been a while, you know, art, the artist is always the last to be recognized, always the last to get paid. Always, you know, they're always pushing the back burner. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like somebody. I mean, I'm so glad for this group that you that, that you you were one of the founding members of that group, which is they're they're rebellious in a good way. They're passionate, and you know, just like you, you're an Aries. You know, I I the big shout out to your birth date, November 19th, <laughs> which is a very significant birthday because I I have a very significant um person in my life who's also born the same day. So I can uh. see that that leadership. You're the instigator. You're the you're the you're ruled by Mars and the and right. <laughs> and you're the emperor in the tarot deck. You know, <laughs> yeah. So and I can see where where you how far you've come. You know, with your work and all that and and um, you know, really uh, appreciate that you've taken the time to do what you do and put it out I, there. I, yeah, I had I had no I had no say in it to to be honest with you. It's it's like one of those things that just carries you from yeah from different project to different project and you just I, I couldn't I don't even remember a time that I wasn't an artist I, I, know I just you. don't <laughs> yeah. um you you've also experimented with with moving images you know the child doll or, or bones right uh, in, in that's, in that's my first yeah yeah um which you, which is called uh let me see I think it's called the a disturbingly, I, I like how you how this is worded. A disturbingly beautiful look into the mind of a cutter, and you know I, there are people that that really do this in real life. You know. Oh yeah. And for um, sure. Yeah, it's it's a really it's, it's part of that human condition that's really hard to understand. You know, and um, do, is that still is that still available? How if people could if somebody wanted to see this particular work? A lot of um, I produced. Uh, probably a dozen art films. I call them art films uh, because they're very short and they're just me mm -hmm. playing with a camera, doing different things. Um, and th they're all on my Vimeo page. If they go to my Vimeo page, you can see all my, um, yeah, it's just Vim Vimeo Santrinera. So if you punch that in, uh, people will be able to, to just look at all the art films that I've done. But Child Dollar Bone was particularly a special one uh, for me. It was my first one. Yeah. And it also starred um, a model, a very good friend of mine, a model, Priscilla. And um, unfortunately, she committed suicide two years after we, we made oh. the film and, and worked together. And that, that was very sad for me. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. So sorry about that. Um, 
I know the last time, you know, uh, if anybody wanted to, uh, you know, we did an interview last year, but it's, it's not on, it's not on the, on my YouTube channel. It's actually, I should put it in my YouTube channel, to be honest. And I think I will, I'll, I'll put, I'll put it there as well, but people wanted to check that out. They can go to my podcast and it's available in different audio streaming uh, form uh, platforms. It's, um, it could be, you can find it on Spotify and uh, pocket, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and of course on um, Spotify or on uh, buzzsprout.com. You're in my interview we did, we did last, last year, which is, which is a lot. I mean, I'm not, we, I'm not, we're not, we talk, we're not talking about the same things, you know, so that, you know, so that people can right. watch that they wanted to. But that, that right. was a good interview as well. And I really liked that one when we first talked. <laughs> Right. And now I know that uh, you're, you're, so you, you know, you, you have your third book coming up, which I'm really excited because I know it's a hardbound. It's a really beautiful, it's called Sent Sentimeros 3. Right. Yeah. Um, so why did you call it that? Because I know the first one was Fruit of the Secret Gods. That's why I'm wearing, um, I'm wearing <laughs> this shirt. I'm wearing this shirt for you, by the way. Oh, okay. It's called Deus Ex Machina, which is God in the Machine. Right. It's a philosophy thing. But, um, you know, because I, I was thinking Fruit of the Secret Gods, the first book you had, and then Dreams, and then you have Santinibus 3. So right. is there a particular reason why you called it that? Um, I think it's going to be my last book. I, I seem to, in my life, things <laughs> seem, <laughs> in my life, things seem to happen in threes. For yeah. some reason, I, I don't know why. It's well, just, it's the charm. <laughs> it's 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 something weird yeah. that's always happened in my life. So I so I just just decided to keep it a real simple. Santrineros three. The cover mm -hmm. um, is very is a very plain cover. Uh, it's it, you know my and the only thing on the spine is my name. So I decided to keep it sort of mysterious, uh, so that people when they do get it, they'll be surprised what's inside it. It's actually quite beautiful it's a it's actually a really stunning stunning book i'm real happy with everything about it yeah and and this book con contains 66 images that has never some of them has never been released right that that is correct yeah and that's and that's because during the pandemic you were you, you went through a whole bunch of things a lot of photos and you found these other yeah that, that that's a, that's that's a that's a good way to bring this up um during the pandemic, I had a lot of time on my hands. I could not work with models because we were, we were isolating here on the property. Um, so I couldn't do any work. And so I decided, well, you know, one, uh, for once in my life, I'm gonna become organized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it didn't happen, but I decided to go through all the negatives I ever did, all my digital files, all the negatives from, from day one, from when I started to shoot. And I noticed that some of the images that I had not considered uh, strong enough to publish or to show actually were. It mm -hmm. was just a matter of they were telling a different story than my initial story that I wanted to tell, but the story was still very strong. So once I started to go through these, I said, you know, people, I think people would like to see these. And so I went through every single thing I ever did and picked 66 out of them to, to put into the new book. Wow. And, and so that book will be released this year. It's going to be released. Um, probably people will be able to have it in their hands mid December. You know, the, when we did the last interview, I know I put that in there. Your, 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 you know, your third book is to be released in, two, in 2021. And that was, I don't, I don't remember if you told me that, or I, I don't think it was cast in stone yet. You know, I think you were just saying it, it was not. It was not. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing a Kickstarter now for it. And we raised enough money to actually have it done. Um, it's still going on. So please, people go on there. And I, I have some great rewards from some great artists, friends of mine um, from around the world that donated pieces for the project. So there, yeah, there's I mean, some good stuff there. Do you want to mention all, all of the all of that? Yeah, I can I can mention um, the artist Jeffrey Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, his work is phenomenal, and we have been friends for such a long time. Matt uh, Lombard, his work is incredible. Um, there's a painter from Italy, Saturno Budo, 
who paints uh, in the old sort of uh, classical style. Uh, his, technically, it looks like a, an old master's painting, but the subject matter is the thing that takes you back because <laughs> you have to just go see him. It, his work is really, uh, it's Budo, B-U-T-T-O. And then I also have on there a, a very rare print and a book by Daikichi-san, uh, Daikichi Amato from Japan. He is a really unique photographer and his work cannot be found. You, you, I've tried for months to try to find any place you can purchase a print by him or even his book. His book has been out of print and you can't even find his, uh, his prints, his work to be to purchase. So um, on, my, on the Kickstarter, I actually am, one of the rewards is the book and the print and my book. So that's a really, that's yeah. a great reward on there, yeah. Very, yeah. I mean, I have the first book and, you know, and I'm looking forward to the next, uh, the other two. And uh, yeah, definitely a collectible. Definitely. And then and it, once, once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> that, yeah, once it's gone, it's gone. This is a very yeah. limited. The third book is only 500 copies. And once those are gone, that's it. Wow. So if people wanted to check that, how, how do they find that? How do they find they can it? go to the, the Kickstarter is running right now. Um, I guess you can put up a link to it uh, at some point, someplace. Uh, but even if you went to the Kickstarter website and punched in my last name, the, the Kickstarter campaign will show up. You can see what the cover of the book looks like. You can see a sample of what the inside looks like. Uh, you can see the other rewards, the other artists. Uh, some of the rewards are gone. They sold out already. Uh, but there are a few left. Yeah. Okay. And of course, if they want to find out a little bit more about you, they can always go to your um, your your page, Santi. I'm gonna spell it. Okay. But some sometimes I'm I'm saying it so fast that I'm not pronouncing correctly. You, you're saying it. No, you're saying it right. Actually. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. Santineros. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It's uh, it's spelled S A N T E R I N E. R O S S dot com. That is correct. Yeah. And and you and are. Can, it, I'm sorry. I, and I'm I, and I'm. I was going to say you're Greek. You have a Greek background. I've uh, yeah. I'm a mutt. I'm many things, but I, I my grandfather was from Greece. Yeah, that's where my name <laughs> comes a, from. A, a Santorini, right? I remember. Yeah, from the Santorini. island of Santorini. Yeah. One of my favorite places in the whole world. The most one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. <laughs> That, that's what I've been. I've never been. And that's what I've been told. I've seen, I've seen pictures of it. It's stunning. Yeah. Well, you know, congratulations on your third book, but I don't think I, I still don't think it's your final book, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so what next? I mean, after this, after the, after this book, well, I, I mean, I, I'm hoping you could have a show somewhere so I can, I can go. And yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I, you know, the pandemic has changed everything. I mean, when yeah. we emerge from this, nothing's going to be the same. We're going to yeah. have to get used to a whole different world, the different world of how to function, you know, how we relate to people. Um, like, as you mentioned, a lot of galleries have closed. Yeah. So whether they come back or not, who knows? So maybe virtual reality galleries. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I've been concentrating so much on just producing the book that I, I don't have a next step. Once the book is published, once the Kickstarter campaign stops and I give everybody their books and their rewards, I have no idea what I'm going to do, to be honest. We'll see. Yeah. Well, I, I know there's a lot more for you. Um, and I'm looking forward to actually meeting you in person one of these days. That'll be nice. So I can bring the first book and you can, you can get your autograph on the first book, which I have. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, if anybody's uh, tuned in on, um, on my podcast, this is also available on my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and, and um, please make a comment if you like this interview. And um, if you're listening, um, you can also uh, check out the, the first interview that's on my podcast. And this is going to air actually like anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs>
And of course, this this actual interview will be aired on um, Mod Snap Radio, the Queen of Wands, on um, the 30th of October. But I'm going to release this um, this interview on my YouTube channel, like uh, soon as like within the next few days. Oh, yeah. excellent! Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we have two weeks left for the Kickstarter campaign, so that'll be a uh, that'll be a big help. I I appreciate it so much. Yeah, of course. W when is the ending of the Kickstarter? Uh, Halloween. Oh, okay, okay, all right, perfect, Ben. Okay, yeah, yeah, it would definitely be like I, probably this. Well, we'll talk about it in a bit. But you know, thank you for for joining me. And anything sure. else you want to mention that I I did not mention? <laughs> No, I, I think that 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 would be pretty much it. Um, I just appreciate you reaching out and and giving me the opportunity to to plug my my life and my projects. I mean, you've always been a big supporter, and and that is so important nowadays, especially for artists and musicians, to have what I call proactive art and music lovers. You know, a lot of people um, say they like you. Uh, but then when it comes to actually supporting you so that you're able to continue to produce, uh, they, they're not there. So I call them proactive supporters. So uh, you're, <laughs> you know, you're a proactive supporter. So I thank you for that. Well, you know, I always believe that you got to support the artists. we got to support each other in every way. You know, I mean, that's just the way True. it is. I mean, um, I mean, if you believe in somebody, then you support them and you and you you're passionate about what they do. Right. No. Uh, yeah, and but and I you know and I thank you for 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 you know for being who you are for being an original well, you know. Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, and um and I and I wish you the best in in your journey, which I'm sure is going to continue on and on and on with more books. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> okay, <I'm> gonna, <laughs> you're probably tired of hearing that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. I I appreciate the enthusiasm. We'll we'll see what the universe has has for me universe yeah the universe is listening right now <laughs> we'll see what happens okay well i'm gonna stop the i'm gonna stop the interview but thank you for being on the show but don't hang up okay i'm just gonna stop. okay okay thank okay, you for thank you done okay one moment okay.